friends, Shay here. So I'm here to open up a new vlog. I don't know how long this vlog is gonna take me to make, but I'm gonna go ahead and start it now. Um, so essentially what this vlog is, is I'm reading romances, like cowboy romances specifically, from authors who I have not read cowboy romances from before. There are a couple of authors where I have read other things they've written, but I have not read cowboy romances from them, so I want to compare to see what's happening with those because I want to experience cowboy romances. It's kind of having a moment again with authors like Elsie Silver and some things. And so being someone who's been reading cowboy romances for a long time, I want to kind of get to some that people have been talking about on and off in the booktube community for a long time that have ended up on my Kindle or in my physical um, possession. And we're going to kind of go from there. Again, I don't know exactly how many of these I'm going to read per video. I have quite a bit, so I might break this up into two at least different vlogs. I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. I do have the first book picked out right now and that is going to be Knotted by Pam Godwin. Um, I have not read any Pam Godwin yet so this will be my first Pam, Go Pam Godwin. I'm hoping to read Dark Notes sometime this year but I have not read anything by her yet. So this is just going to be an exploration of cowboy romance, what authors are worth your time, what authors aren't, in the particular cowboy romance category. Now, I do have some cowboy romance recommendation videos that I've done on the channel before. I'll leave them linked in the corner um, throughout the video. If I do another one before this vlog goes up, I'll post that as well in the cards. But yes, we're going to talk about um, the cowboy romances and what I like, what I don't like, authors I know I love, um, I'm not going to really be reading much from them. I, I mean, I might just read them for fun, but, um, ones that I've read significant amounts of cowboy romance from, I'm definitely going to skip, but yeah. So anyways, that's kind of the intro to this vlog. It's kind of weird, I know, but it's okay. It's all going to be fine. And I'm going to get reading and we'll chat more later. Alrighty. So I've read the first like six-ish chapters of Knotted by Pam Godwin and... I'm not sure how I feel yet. This doesn't have the feeling of a cowboy romance that I wanted it to, at least not at this point. It doesn't mean that it won't in the future, but as of right now, basically we've had the traumatic thing happen um, that kind of sets forth the rest of the story. Essentially, these two families were basically um, helping raise each other on a ranch together um, there was, um, a boy and a girl who were in a romantic pairing and then each of their brothers. And one night when the girl finally turned 16, they're ready to take that next step. And just as they're kind of getting to that point, they are interrupted by a couple of criminals from another state. And she is brutally raped and abused and basically her boyfriend wakes up and sees all this happening to her and so things happen and now because of this instance the families are now like separating so she is now off in Chicago having a tough time and her dad is a completely different person now her brother went to jail and they've been forcibly separated and none of them wanted. Um, the next chapter will be two years in the future, which will mean she's 18. She, it, and it sounds like she's probably going to go back to Oklahoma because her dad had put that completely off limits to her. So I'm interested to see where the next part goes. So hi friends. So I just wanted to come on and update this vlog real quick because I have finished Knotted by Pam Godwin. Now, as I read this, the western slash cowboy elements weren't very strong for me. There were little hints of it here and there and it is based solely on a ranch but this is more about the journey of healing from trauma than it is about being a cowboy romance because basically these are people who were in love as kids. A traumatic thing happens to them. Um, content warning for um, rape and attempted um, murder. 
It has a, an almost romantic suspense element to it where they try to keep her away and the way all of that happens is, again, adding to her trauma. And then she comes back to honor a pact that they made after the trauma and they try to do trauma style therapy on their own without any help from a therapist which i think is harmful so um i'm giving this book two stars <laughs> um the writing wasn't bad i would pick up another pam godwin but there were just some choices made that i don't agree with which is why i can't give this book a higher rating so when it comes to reading cowboy romances from pam godwin i don't think i'm going to be doing that anymore because they also tried to throw in the we're going to use kink to heal your trauma kind of thing. And y'all know I'm not okay with that. So, <laughs> Knotted by Pam Godwin was not a win. I do not recommend cowboy romances from her. If you're looking for things in dealing with trauma, I think she's going to be a good author for it. As long as the other books I pick up from her, when we're dealing with the trauma parts, we actually get a therapist involved. Because these are, you know, 22-year-old kids trying to think they can do it all on their own. And I'm not okay with that. No matter how much research you do, a licensed therapist is a licensed therapist for a reason. So, this book just wasn't necessarily bad. It was just not for me. So, if you're interested in it, you're welcome to try. It's about 300 pages, so... I know a lot of her books are very long. This is one of her shorter ones. And maybe that's why it didn't work as well. And she tried to cut too much out. I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of where I'm at with that one. Um, so sadly, that was a bust. I wish it was... It, I really wish it had gone better. Hey, friends. So it's been a minute since I've updated this vlog. And I finished two books for this vlog since we last chatted. Life has been crazy. I am in my comfort hoodie because I need it today. But the first one that I'm going to talk to you guys about is Teach Me the Ropes by Vanessa Vale. This is my first Vanessa Vale book, period. And I have to say, I've really enjoyed this one. I do wish it was a tad longer so that the relationship actually had a little bit more room to breathe because it's very insta-lovey. But in this one, we have a woman who moved to a small town following a guy. She gets there. She finds out he's married and he's garbage. Um, from there... <laughs> She's trying to just kind of settle into town. Her roommate kind of, the roommate that she got after that um, ended up stealing all of her stuff. So she's like living in the back of the preschool she works at and is just trying to get by. And one day she's out there and she sees this guy picking up this girl and she's like wildly attracted to him. He's wildly attracted to her. But they get off on the wrong foot because she's not about to get involved in someone with someone where she doesn't know if they're married especially after just recently being burned. So she's settling into this small town. He works and owns a ranch. He also works as a firefighter. And he really doesn't know what he did to get under her skin because he doesn't have the full story. But as that story unfolds and he finds out who this guy is that did this to her in town, he actually knows them. And um, it makes a lot more sense. I'm not going to say anything more than that except... The thing that finally gets them to actually spend time together so she's not purposely avoiding him is a bachelor auction, which is really fun. I really loved that. There's two more books following the brothers. I'm probably, I've already picked them up, honestly. <laughs> so I do plan to continue on in this series. But if you're looking for a nice, quick cowboy romance, this series, I would definitely recommend. Um, the other one that I've read, I actually have physically here, and that is The Price of Passion by Maureen Child. I've not read any Maureen Child to my memory, so I went ahead and picked this one up. I've had it for a while. I mean, this one came out June of 2020, so I've had it for a while. I finally got around to reading it, and it was all right. Um, I would pick up another Maureen Child, but this story just kind of wasn't my favorite. It's a second chance romance where a miscommunication happened when they were in high school, and then he ends up marrying her best friends. There are circumstances as to why, and he's a good guy for it. But then they, like, leave out of town, no explanation, and all that kind of stuff. So now his wife has passed away. Um, she got very sick and passed away. I believe it was of cancer. And now he's back in town because he wants to claim everything from his past, including 
this girl that he thought had broken up with him, but she's like, no, we didn't break up. We just had an argument. I was trying to figure some things out. We were young, you know, because yeah, at 18 they were. <laughs> and so this is one of those where a conversation when they were younger could have really solved a lot of the problems of this one. So again, that's miscommunication being the main trope is not my favorite thing. So, but the writing was solid and the like town that this was built in was really great. So I would do another Texas Cattleman's Club book by her or, you know, just another cowboy romance by her because the writing wasn't bad. Just the trope chosen is not a favorite one. So, so far in this series, we're doing pretty good. We've got three down. I'm going to do at least two more for this vlog, I think. Um, the next one I have picked out is One Wild Texas Night by Sarah Orwig. This is another Harlequin Desire. Um, this one's not part of a particular series as far as I can tell. Oh, the Texas Airs. So I've not read any in the Texas Airs. I don't think that doesn't feel familiar. So this will be the next one. And then anyways, that's kind of where we're at in this vlog. And then we'll kind of wrap things up here because so far I've learned Pam Godwin is not someone I would go to for cowboy romance, but Vanessa Vale and um, Maureen Child, definitely. So this series is supposed to kind of give me a new list to pull from for my cowboy romances because I want to explore more authors because it's a trope and a genre of romance that I really quite enjoy that honestly until recently most people weren't reading I was one of the few so with that said I'm done with that for now so we will chat more when I've read more hey friends so I'm here to update this vlog again because I did finish one Wild Texas Night by Sarah Orwig. Now, in this particular novel, if you took out, like, the cowboy elements of this, it definitely wouldn't work. This one is a really great look at what enemies to lovers could be because these two have had neighboring ranches for forever, and there's been this deep family feud between their families for years and years. And one thing that we learn early on is that they each have a sibling that ran off together, like they left as a couple and cut ties with the family so that they could be together. But um, in the beginning, we do have a fire situation here. So they're like evacuating their ranches. Hers was more heavily hit than his. And he goes over to just lightly check on her, see if they've all evacuated out just because he's a decent human being. And he sees that she's on the ground with her back to the fire, looking over a mom and her pups because she's in the middle of giving birth. <laughs> Which obviously is bad because fires change super fast. So he goes, rescues her and the pups, and they start, like, being in each other's proximity, and things start to change. It starts initially with the physical attraction and the sexual attraction, but they truly learn to rely on one another throughout the course of the novel. It works really well. The feud is definitely a big part of the will-they-won't-they they situation. Again, it is pretty short. These Harlequin desires always are. Um, there were parts of this that were a little overwritten for me, so if I was really interested in the tropes, I would pick up another Sarah Orwig, I think, but I'm not going to pick it up just based on her name at this point, because a lot of the things, especially in the first, like, 75-ish pages of a 200-page book, um, were very repetitive. So I think this one needed either different descriptions or, like just needed a little more going for it so we weren't just sitting in the cycle of angst quite so much. So this one I'm going to give three stars. Again, not a bad book. Um, a little overwritten for my particular taste, but otherwise very, very good. Hello! I know you've primarily seen me in my office for this vlog, and I'm sorry for that, but I just happen to be in my office when I need to update you, and usually I'm working on a million things all at once. So with that said, I'm here to update you because I've read another cowboy romance. So this one is Amazed by You by Cheyenne McIntyre, I believe is the last name. Whatever it says here, I believe it's McIntyre. But this one is, again, just kind of generic. So we have the big city girl, Celine, coming to 
um, a ranch to do a photo shoot for her fashion line. Jason is the owner of the ranch that they're at. He had lost a bet to someone, and so they're doing the photo shoot at his ranch instead of the other guy's ranch. And they meet, they get to know one another, and things kind of go from there. She always kind of wanted to live in the country, and he thinks she's really pretty and likes what she's doing. And when she's all dressed down, he's really attracted to her. So, yeah, that's just kind of what this one's about. I'm going to give it a three. I would pick up another Cheyenne McIntyre, I think. But it's one of those where I'd have to really like the tropes. So this isn't one I would necessarily always recommend, but to the right person, or if this is like your intro to cowboy romance, I think it's a good place to start because it's a very solid story. Nothing in it was super overly offensive to me. I think it was really well done, um, but it was just very basic for a cowboy romance. So if you're looking for a basic cowboy romance, this one's a great one. Um, and yeah, I've enjoyed my time with it well enough. Um, I do have one more that I have started, and that is A Cowboy State of Mind by Jeannie Mar Martis. I've got this whole series. This one's the first one in the series. Um, Source, I believe, yes, Source was kind enough to send it to me, and I'm just very behind on getting to it. So I wanted to include that one in here. So once I finish up that one, I will come back here. We'll wrap things up. Um... I'll either finish it today or tomorrow, so very soon. Hello, friends. So I am here to finish out this vlog. So the last book that I ended up reading, and I read it all yesterday, and that is A Cowboy State of Mind by Jenny Martz. Now, I said her name wrong, I think, in the previous clip, but this is one of the best cowboy romances I've read in a hot minute, and I absolutely loved and adored everything about this. The setup was great. Zane and Bryn both bring a lot to the table. He is the perfect grump to her sunshine. Um, he's very sensitive to animals and he doesn't get along well with people because of the way he was raised. And so she just breaks down all of his walls. He keeps thinking he's not good enough for her. And so he wants to push her away because he's afraid he will hurt her. But really what's going on is he's afraid of getting hurt because he's been hurt in some way by everyone he loves because they have left in some way or form two of them to death. So trigger warnings for death of a family member and death of a loved one. So they're not on page, thankfully, but they are mentioned. But the way that Bryn and Zane work through their problems felt very realistic. And through it all, they also start this rescue, like this animal rescue ranch kind of not on purpose, but it ends up happening. And so there's this ragtag weird group of animals that help uh, move the story along sometimes. And it's brilliant. It's everything I want in a cowboy romance. Like this is peak cowboy romance. Now, the reason why I didn't give it a five is because our heroine had proved that his scars, because he is a scarred hero, and how he looks never mattered to her. And he still uses that as a way to push her away in the third act conflict. So I did drop it a bit for that. But honestly, like, I'm definitely going to be picking up more Jenny Martz because I honestly think the way she writes cowboy romances is very charming and cozy the way I want a cowboy romance to feel. So out of this experiment, I do think the cowboy state of mind is the best one that I read out of the bunch. But um, none of them I read were necessarily bad. They just weren't what I thought they were going to be usually, or I wanted a little more from them. So, um, but yeah, Jenny Martz is by far and away the best author I'm taking away from this experiment. Um, I am going to break this up into multiple videos because I didn't realize how many new to me cowboy romance authors I'd picked up and not read anything from yet. So we're going to remedy that. So this is just episode one of a series I'm going to be doing on this channel. So if cowboy romances aren't your thing, I'm okay if you skip these videos. But if you're here just because you love me, leave me a horse emoji and let me know what you think down below. Um, if you have a favorite cowboy romance author, let me know down below because I'm always up to add more to my collection because I love the genre so much. So I hope this was helpful. Hope it gives you an idea of 
what I used to classify whether it was a cowboy romance or not. So anyways, if it's unclear, please tell me down below. I'll try to correct that for you. So anyways, thanks again for watching, friends. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. It's been raining for days now, been running like a child. Can't feel the cold, well I'm lost here with you, lost in the woods. Lost as I choose.